This is The Real House. The Conjuring movie is based on. In 1971, Roger and Carolyn Perrin moved in with their five daughters. We were just moving into a charming, lovely, old house. Their terrifying experiences were even more intense than the movie depicted. Wham, wham! The bedroom door stopped flying open out of nowhere. There are things that happen in that house that I won't ever tell anybody, nobody, not my family, not my sisters, not my parents, not my best friends, not anybody. Now, a new family lives in the house. We bought the house because the number one horror movie of all time was based off of events, real life events that happened in this house. And once again, things are starting to happen. This used to be Roger and Carolyn's bedroom. This book has been thrown from the shelf twice. Well, we've had a lot of things happen, just the doors opening, things that you hear, things that you feel. This is where me and my wife actually witnessed the shadow figure. My son had his experience in. One night spending the night and he saw a black shadow come over him while he was sleeping. You could just see this black mist just hovering right over us. And he said it moved around the room in here and then it just dissipated. With a quarantine in effect, this family is trapped in the house. It's just them and all the ghosts. I was in the room by myself and I heard a growl. So that definitely caught me off guard. And I had... I heard that. Yeah, just normal shit. Just don't pay attention to it. It's okay. It came from that I room. know it did. It's okay. It's, it happens all the time. Join the Heinzen family as they live stream their experiences living in one of the most haunted houses in the world. The latch does pop open sometimes on its own. There's this and one other latch that does it often, but most of the doors in this house have opened on their own. For one entire week, you'll get to interact with them and become remote ghost hunters to help them investigate the house, try to make contact with the spirits, and to capture definitive proof that the afterlife is real. If you loved the movie, you can't miss this once-in-a-lifetime experience. Inside the house, live. Well, we bought the house because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I mean, how many chances do you have to not only own a piece of American history, but also own paranormal history? Yeah. You know, so it was like a no brainer for us. The reason it, it meant so much to us was because we are paranormal researchers. I mean, that's, that's our job, that's our passion, you know, and to be able to own something like this and wake up and do it on a continual basis and basically do something that nobody else is doing or had an opportunity to do. Right. Uh, and know. to share it with other people like us. I mean, to be able to give other people the opportunity, we would have liked the opportunity in their position. I mean, this is the house that inspired The Conjuring. Yeah. You know, and not too many people can say that. You know, the, the number one horror movie of all time was based off of events, real life events that happened in this house. Um, so far, the house itself has been pretty active, but it hasn't been anything scary. Lots of things have happened, lots of things that, that have scared us in the moment, but most of the time we high-five each other after it because it's exciting. 
some of the things that we've been experiencing here in the house, um, disembodied voices, uh, EVPs, electric voice phenomenon. Uh, we've had uh, footsteps, uh, black masses. Uh, Body figure. Yeah, we had a shadow figure. Uh, what else? Doors opening. Doors opening and closing. Objects moving. Yeah, things um, flying off shelves. I mean, it's it's almost like a mix of like poltergeist activity and you know just mean. traditional hauntings and almost like you know you almost have God how how could you put it I mean it's almost like a an intelligent haunt and a residual haunt all in one right so for me I don't like to be in any part of the house alone <laughs> I'm comfortable as long as somebody's with me. Um, the part of the house that creeps me out the most is definitely the um, middle bedroom upstairs. I can walk through it, but that's about it. You ask me to stand in there for a long period of time, and that's a no-go. Um, the middle bedroom when the parents lived here was uh, a bedroom for two of the girls, one of which for sure I know is Cindy, mm -hmm. only because she talks about the scary experiences she had in there. And that bedroom to me just feels heavy. Yeah, there's something not right with that bedroom. Yeah, to me that just doesn't, that bedroom has something that just doesn't feel right, not comfortable. The whole purpose of us buying this, to share it with others, I mean, this is our paranormal Disney World. Um, this is where me and my wife actually witnessed the shadow figure. Uh, looking at us as we were laying in bed one night and we both witnessed it. We weren't aware each other were awake. Um, so that was really neat because that was really the time I think my wife really went from being a skeptic to, okay, this for sure is real. And it formed into like a giant, like just audulating cloud. And he said it moved around the room in here and then it just dissipated. And it freaked him out enough to where I had to have my sister come up from New York to pick him up and bring him up to New Hampshire for my parents to come down from Maine to pick him up and bring him home two days earlier than he was supposed to leave. And it's not a shock, you know, all these tabloids and stuff saying, oh, what would you think you were getting yourself into? I knew what we were getting ourselves into. Me and my wife have been doing this long enough. We just, how many times have people gone to these places like the Lizzie Borden house or, or something like that and pay like thousands of dollars and nothing happens. We didn't think from night one stuff would start happening like it has. And right now it's going down the same path to what the parents described. Everything's playful to a point. And I'm worried that it's going to get to that point. And I want to try to stop it before it gets to that point. So this is the only way I know how. And that's what concerns me because, you know, it's already taken on these shapes, dark figures, uh, dark masses, dark mists, um, black smoke. You know, do I have to be concerned about my kids? Absolutely. Do I have to be concerned about my wife? Absolutely. You know, so it's trying to take it one day at a time, but at the same time, trying to get to the bottom of it and not trying to lose our minds or losing our family life over it. First time we walked through the property and the house, we absolutely fell in love with it. But that definitely changed quickly after purchasing the home and spending more time here. But we've had a lot of little things happen, just the doors opening, things that you hear, things that you feel. The biggest thing, the biggest eye opener for me at this point was definitely the black shadow apparition figure that was in the doorway one night when Corey and I were sleeping. Both, both of us started at the same time and that was very scary, heart stopping and exciting all at once. That was, um, the more we're in the house, the more active it's getting. It kind of feels like it could be going on the same line as the way the parents were when they were living at the house. So we are, we're taking our time, investigating, figuring out what's going on with the house first. Uh, Kylo definitely loved the house at first. Uh, we visited the house twice with him before we purchased the home. He was very excited. Um, uh, 
Um, he had had things happen in the beginning that made him a little nervous. Um, doors opening, hearing stuff, being in a room by himself, he was kind of nervous hearing things outside the door. Uh, the major experience for him was one night spending the night and he saw a black shadow come over him while he was sleeping. Didn't tell us about it at first. We were supposed to spend the weekend here. He uh, wanted to go home the next day. Didn't really tell us why, just was ready to go home. Uh, Corey's sister Katie picked him up on her way through. Um, the plan right now is to take it day by day. Um, I mean, I was very excited. I mean, you uh, look back to the date where um, my father said, would you like to buy the Condren house? You think to yourself, like the real Condren house, like the real actual deal one. As I went to go look up in the ceiling and you could just see this black mist just hovering right over us. And you're thinking to yourself like, wow, did that actually just happen or not? Me forever thinking about it now. I just don't want to be back in the house. Um, I am worried about my parents' safety because if you look back to like the parents and the, the Warrens investigating here, you know what happened here and I don't want the same thing happen to my parents. I don't, I don't want to go back in the Conjuring house, not at all. There's something in there that just completely terrified me that makes me just not want to come back here. I was in the room by myself and I heard a growl, so that definitely caught me off guard. And I had... I heard that. Yeah, just normal shit, just don't pay attention to it, it's okay. I came from that room. I know it's okay, it happens all the time. <laughs>